Hi, it's Mrs. Grimaldi back for one of our first chapter Friday reads again. This week, I am going to read to you a chapter from this nonfiction book, The 57 Bus. It is by Dashka Slater. 57 Bus by Dashka Slater. And this is a nonfiction book about um, two young people, Sasha and Richard, who were both on a bus on their way home from school one day and Richard sets Sasha's skirt on fire. And this is the story of the results of that decision that Richard has made. Um, so I'm going to read the first chapter of this book and the author's note at the beginning for you. It's a very good book and we hope that you will check it out. So I'm going to start with the author's note. This is a true story. All the people in this book are real, although in some cases, pseudonyms or initials were used. Young people are identified by first name only. The details of the story were pieced together from a variety of sources, including interviews, documents, letters, videos, diaries, social media posts, and public records. Quotes from these sources are verbatim, except in a few cases where I removed last names, replacing them with long dashes. Information from first-hand accounts was corroborated with official records wherever possible, unless those records were sealed or not available to the public. In those cases, I relied on the memory of the witnesses and participants. The pronouns and names used for gender non-conforming people were approved by the people in question. The 57 bus. Monday, November 4th, 2013. By 4.30 in the afternoon, the first mad rush of after-school passengers has come and gone. What's left are stragglers and stay-laters swiping their bus passes as they climb onto the 57 bus and take seats among the coming home workers, the shoppers and errand doers, the other students from high schools and middle schools around the city. The bus is loud, but not as loud as sometimes. A few clusters of kids are shouting and laughing, and an older woman at the front keeps talking to the driver. Dark is coming on. Daylight savings ended yesterday, and now evening rushes into the place where afternoon used to be. Everything is duskier, sleepier, wintier now. Passengers look at their phones or stare through the scratched and grimy windows at the waning light. Sasha sits near the back. For much of the journey, the teenager has been reading a paperback copy of Anna Karenina for a class in Russian literature. Today, like most days, Sasha wears a t-shirt a black fleece jacket, a gray flat cap, and a gauzy white skirt. A senior in a small private high school, the teenager identifies as agender, neither male nor female. As the bus lumbers through town, Sasha puts the book down and drifts into sleep, skirt draped over the edge of the seat. A few feet away, three teenage boys are laughing and joking. One of them, Richard, wears a black hoodie and an orange-billed New York Knicks hat. A 16-year-old junior at Oakland High School, he's got hazel eyes and a slow, sweet grin. He stands with his back to Sasha, gripping a pole for balance. Sasha sleeps as Richard and his companions goof around, play fighting. Sleeps as Richard's cousin, Lloyd, bounds up and down the aisle, flirting with the girl up front. Sleeps as Richard surreptitiously flicks the lighter and touches it to the hem of that gauzy white skirt. Wait. In a moment... Sasha will wake inside a ball of flame and begin to scream. In a moment, everything will be set in motion. Taken by ambulance to a San Francisco burn unit, Sasha will spend the next three and a half weeks undergoing multiple surgeries to treat second and third degree burns running from calf to thigh. Arrested at school the following day, Richard will be charged with two felonies, each with a hate crime clause that will add time to his sentence if he is convicted. Citing the severity of the crime, the district attorney will charge him as an adult, stripping him of the protections normally given to juveniles. Before the week is out, he will be facing the possibility of life imprisonment. But none of that has happened yet. For now, both teenagers are just taking the bus home from school. Surely it's not too late to stop things from going wrong. There must be some way to wake Sasha, divert Richard, get the driver to stop the bus. There must be something you can do. That's chapter one of the 57 bus. So I hope that you like that chapter and that it um, compels you to read the rest of the book. It is a very good book and you can check it out at your library. Thank you.